This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, home to over 2,500 documentaries and nonfiction titles for curious minds. Okay, do not blink. That's probably the only cool card trick I can do, but I can tell you something interesting about playing cards I learned a few months ago. In a standard deck, there are four suits for the four seasons in a year. There are 52 cards for the 52 weeks in a year, and if you let Ace have a value of 1, then all other card values follow from there up to 13. Adding up all the cards in the deck gets you 364. Add one Joker and you get 365, the number of days in a year. Add the second Joker and you get the number of days in a leap year. That blew my mind the first time I heard it. I don't know why I didn't learn it earlier in life, but hopefully it surprised some of you as well. And the rest of this video is going to be some more random things will be all over the place that will hopefully surprise you. And these are things I learned over the past like year or so, which just didn't make it into any other videos. Like this puzzle that was taken out of the Is It Possible video that I did a few months back. Imagine a circle with four points A, B, C, and D on the perimeter. Then we'll put three points on the interior B, C, and D as shown. But the second A will also go on the perimeter. The question is, can you connect A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D such that the connections don't leave the circle and also don't intersect? This probably wouldn't take many of you that long to figure out, but I think it's the mathematical reasoning here that's really interesting. Now, if you just think about connecting A to A, this seems like it might be impossible. Because if you connect A to itself like this, then you have completely eliminated the ability to connect the D points together, since to do so you'd have to have the lines intersect, which isn't allowed. If you instead connect the A's like this, you still cannot connect the D points together. If you do something like this, now you can't connect the B points together, so this isn't looking possible. But let me ask this instead. If I move the points around as shown, can you now complete the same task asked before? That answer is obviously yes. A goes straight to A, and everything else connects easily. But the fact that this works allows us to see that the previous question is possible. Because if we just rearrange the points back to their original configuration while pushing the connections around as needed, we get a configuration that satisfies everything we said and connects all the letters to their partners. What we did was turn a more difficult problem into an easy one through a continuous transformation or homeomorphism that allowed us to get a solution. So it didn't even require trial and error, but rather just being a little clever. Now this next puzzle is a seemingly simple one that has to do with a rectangular region, but we can really think of it as a one-dimensional line segment as well. The question is, can you place five points, we'll label x1 through x5, such that x1 is within that region, so that's easy, then x1 and x2 must be in different halves, x1, x2, and x3 have to be in different thirds, x1 through x4 must be in different fourths, and all the points must be in different fifths of that region. Okay, at first I thought this was going to be super easy, but it's not. Here, let's just build up to it. If we place x1 here, that just satisfies the first condition, no problem. Now for the second point, let's place it here. Since it's in a different half of the region than x1, we've satisfied condition 2. But the third condition says that the first three points must be in different thirds, and these two points are already in the same third. So that failed, but let's just move them aside and put x3 in the middle, because order doesn't matter. Then here's the region split into fourths, and we see there is an open spot for x4 to go, such that condition 4 is satisfied. Everything's in their own separate fourth. But now we got to split it into fifths and hope that x1 through x4 are in different fifths while allowing room for x5. And yes, in fact, that does work out. x5 just goes here, and we're good. This, of course, isn't the only solution, but we can't just switch any of these that we want and have something that still works. Like, if we swap x2 and x5, then that's fine for condition 5. But if we go back to condition 4, then now x1 through x4 are not all in different fourths. So we can't maneuver as much as we'd want. Okay, fine, that wasn't too tough, but what if we were to keep going? 
What if we did this with six points or seven or 10 and so on using that same pattern of rules? Well, if you want to try this on your own, try it with 10 points because you'll see it's definitely not easy. But a more random question is, can we keep going? Will this even be possible with 10 or 20 or 100 points? Because it definitely seems like it is. It seems like if we're just really clever, we can arrange the number to satisfy all the conditions, depending on how many points you have. But we actually can't go on forever. It's a seemingly endless puzzle, but it does end. And the last number we can work with is 17. If you have 17 points and have to satisfy 17 conditions, you can make it work. But at 18 and anything after, it becomes impossible. Here you can see a picture of a solution with 17 points, but you won't find anything after that. Then if you've seen this year's Math Avengers video, the next few minutes is my part. It's a very simple unsolved math problem that didn't make it into this video I did before. See, for most unsolved math problems, you need a degree in mathematics just to understand the problem. Here's an example called the Hodge Conjecture, which comes with a million dollar prize by the way, but as you can see, there are very few words a non-mathematician would understand. So let's see an example of a much simpler question. What we have here is a brick, a rectangular prism, and I've labeled all the side lengths, A, B, and C, and I've also labeled all the diagonals, X, Y, and Z, or the diagonals of the faces. Now, what makes this brick an Euler brick is if all of these values are integers. However, finding integers that makes this work is not easy. For example, if we were to try like 3, 4, and 5 for the side lengths, well that's fine here, 3 and 4 have a diagonal of 5, that works, that's an integer. But 3 and 5 yield a non-integer diagonal, so that doesn't work. Now this is not the unsolved part though, so the next question would be, what's an example of an Euler brick? What's the smallest Euler brick that exists? Give that some thought, but not really because it's going to take you a while. Just finding these first few integers is not easy but I memorized them for this video. Here we have it, the first Euler brick. So the side lengths A, B, and C are 44, 117, and 240 respectively. And then if you do the Pythagorean theorem with each of those pairs, you get these numbers. So like 44 and 117 give you 125. You do it with 44 and 240, you get 244, and then these two give you 267. So we can keep going from there, but again, this is the first Euler brick. Now the equations that represent this are called Diophantine equations, which are just polynomial equations that only have integer solutions. And in this case, those look like this. So we have three Pythagorean theorems, and any integer solutions to these equations yield an Euler brick. Now, the unsolved part of this comes in when we add a fourth diagonal, one that goes from the bottom left corner to the top right. I'll draw that in, and I'm just going to call that D. If you can find an A, B, and C such that everything here is an integer, you have found a perfect Euler brick. However, the question of does a perfect Euler brick exist is still unsolved. That's the part we don't know. So it's actually a perfect Euler brick is unsolved. When we add in that fourth equation, which would be a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals d squared, the diagonal, then we don't know if there are integer solutions that satisfy these four equations. However, through the use of computers and just number theory, we have found out a lot about the properties of these numbers if an Euler brick does exist. For example, just from the Wikipedia page, we know if a perfect Euler brick exists, the smallest edge must be greater than 5 times 10 to the 11th. We know one edge, two face diagonals, and the long diagonal would be odd. We have a bunch of divisibility rules, and so on. That's about it though. Solving just those three Diophantine equations is not meant for a quick video like this, so it wasn't much I even could go into depth on, but I love unsolved problems and this was an easy one to talk about. And just because we're on this topic, here's another simple unsolved problem. This here is a minimal Sudoku. That means it only has one solution, but if you remove any number, you now have a Sudoku with more than one solution, meaning it's not a proper Sudoku anymore. They very recently confirmed that 17, what you see here, is the minimum number of clues you can have for a minimal Sudoku. 
Anything less and you'll have more than one solution. What we don't know is the maximum number of clues for a minimal puzzle. However, we believe it's 40 and only two of those puzzles have ever been discovered, one you're seeing now. Compare that to the over 2,000 minimal puzzles with 39 clues that we have found. So if we remove one number from this Sudoku, then we'll have a puzzle with multiple solutions. However, we think if you have 41 or more clues, then yeah, you have one solution, but remove a number and you'll still only have one solution, so it's not minimal. We still aren't sure yet though. There are several other unsolved problems that are easy to understand, but I might save that for a future video. If you want to continue learning more random cool things though, you can head on over to CuriosityStream, the sponsor of today's video. CuriosityStream hosts thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles put on by industry leaders that you will very likely enjoy if you're a fan of this channel. They have documentaries like The Hawking Paradox if you want to learn more about one of the greatest mistakes made by Stephen Hawking in his search for a deeper understanding behind the physics of black holes. Or for those who like the real world applications of mathematics, I recommend The Secret Life of Chaos, which will take you through several examples of how chaos shows up in reality and even math itself. CuriosityStream is available on a variety of streaming services including Roku, Android, Xbox One, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and more, and it only comes out to $2.99 per month. Plus, if you go to CuriosityStream.com slash Major Prep or click the link below, you'll get your first month's membership completely free, so no risk in just giving it a try. But with that, I'm going to end that video there. Of course, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon, social media links to follow me are down below, and I will see you guys next time.